Hi guys, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, we're talking all about five disadvantages, actually not five, we're gonna go for six, six disadvantages as to why you shouldn't be using a limited company. So if you look on my YouTube channel, you've seen last week's video, where I give you five reasons why you should consider using it. This time we're playing devil's advocate, we're going to the other side, and I'm gonna give you six reasons as to why you shouldn't be using one. Okay, so reason number one is it's more expensive to set up. Compare this to trading in your own name as a sole trader, a buy to that landlord as an individual, you've got no setup costs. All you need to do is register with HMRC that you need to submit a tax return and that's it. However, as a limited company on the other hand, you have to set the company up at a company's house. This costs money. If you do it yourself, it's 12 pounds. If you get an accountant to do it for you, it could cost money hundreds. If you go for one of the more complicated structures with different alphabet shares and different share classes, it can cost into the high hundreds of pounds. So that's the one disadvantage to having a limited company is that it costs more to get it set up. Another disadvantage is that the ongoing running costs are more expensive as well. As a landlord trading through their own name, you need to do a self-assessment tax return. The cost of this is just a couple of hundred pounds for people with a small number of properties. However, with a limited company, because there's a lot more going on, the accounting requirements are a lot more complex. You need to do a full set of accounts, a corporation tax return, a confirmation statement. Um, and as a result of this, your accountancy fees for a limited company are probably double what they are for your standard self-assessment tax return. So that's definitely something to bear in mind. Point number three is double taxation. So where you're a landlord trading for your own name, the rental income you receive is yours to keep. It belongs to you, it's in your bank account, you pay your tax on it and that's it. However, for a limited company, this isn't the case. Where you've got a limited company, it pays corporation tax at 19% on the profits. However, this then belongs to the company. If you wanna bring this out to spend as a director shareholder, enjoy personally, you're gonna pay extra tax on this because you'll be putting it out as a salary, dividends, interest income, any of those three, then there'd be an extra layer of tax to pay on that. If you'd pull out a salary, you could be as high as up to 45%, uh, maybe even higher as well with dividends and national insurance and all of these kind of taxes that you have to take into account. So that's something to bear in mind is that if you've got a limited company and you're looking to pull the money out often, having a limited company might not be the best thing for you. However, if you compare this to not having a limited company, you need to do the maths to see whether it's worthwhile based on what you're going to be pulling out. So a limited company is great if you're looking to reinvest it because you do only pay the tax once if it's in there. It's a lower rate compared to what you would when you pull it out. However, if you do look on pulling it out time and time again, you might want to consider whether you should be in a limited company. So point number four, following on from that one is that you don't get a personal allowance for a limited company. If your limited company has £100 in profits, it will be paying tax at 19%, £19 pound tax due on that. However, if you're an individual, trading, if you're a landlord trading as an individual, you get your £12,570 personal allowance. So if you've got no other income at all in the tax year, having that property income that falls within your personal allowance is tax free. So that's definitely a disadvantage to having a limited company because you do lose out on your personal allowance. On the flip side, if you do have a limited company, you could potentially look at taking a salary from your limited company, which utilizes your personal allowance, but that's a little bit too complicated to be discussing here. Point number five. So you don't have your capital gains annual exempt amount. So when you sell a property in a limited company, you'll pay corporation tax on the profits of the sale. So if you make a hundred thousand pound gain, 19% corporation tax, you've got 19,000 pounds in tax to pay. However, for an individual trading through their own name, when you do this, you pay capital gains tax. So you get your capital gains annual exempt amount, which is currently around £12,300. And then depending on your basic, whether you're a basic rate taxpayer, you'll pay 18% tax on this as it's residential property. But if you're a high rate taxpayer, 28%. So for those that are looking to sell properties more often, when there's a small gain involved, losing out on your capital gains annual exempt amount could be a massive disadvantage. So our last point, point number six, is that finance is more expensive in a limited company. So limited companies have only recently gotten quite popular for property investors, ever since around 2015, 2016, for when the tax changes were introduced and investors started going into limited companies en masse. 
Whereas now, because buy to let lending is still very much a unique product, it is more expensive, but it is getting more competitive. So as the years progress and limited company lending does become more common, I would expect the rates to decrease a little bit. But as it stands with buy to let mortgages in your own name, you could be getting them for two, maybe two and a half percent compared to buy to let mortgages in a limited company name where you're looking upwards of say three to four percent. So that's definitely something to bear in mind when calculating whether it's worth going for a limited company, going for your own name. Definitely speak to a finance broker about it because there are a lot of quirks to it as well, such as when you have a large enough portfolio where you can a portfolio landlord, then lending also gets more expensive. So there's so many different areas to consider um, that relates highly to your personal circumstances that you do need to get specialist advice from a finance broker and an accountant to see which is the best for you. So those are my top six reasons for not using a limited company. If you've not seen last week's video about my top five reasons for using a limited company, definitely go and check that out. Um, watch for it, write it out so you can make your mind up as to which way you're gonna go on this. Make sure you do hit that like and subscribe button so you guys get a notification as soon as we post more tax saving content. Otherwise, cheers for watching guys.